Hello YouTube and welcome back to another episode of Dating Advice. This time featuring the lovely butternut giraffe. We're going to be handing out some shoulders to cry on, some words of wisdom, and some shocked, disgusted faces. So buckle up, get your snackies, and enjoy the video. And as always, be sure to check out my Twitter. Welcome to Dating Advice featuring Kayla. We're gonna be doing dating advice today. We're gonna to be dragging some people into a little one-on-one -on -one chat with us where we're gonna be hearing out whatever sort of predicament they might want any sort of guidance or advice on or just a second opinion or just someone to listen to them, you know? I never get someone to listen to me. What do you mean by that? Kayla, chat, did you guys know? I actually got a degree, unlike everyone else here. Psychology, right? Yeah, I have a BS. A Bachelor's of Science in Psychology. Wow. Yeah, I have a bullshit in psychology. Okay, so Stockholm yes, Syndrome, you okay. spelled it I got funny. A so first of all, I do want to say, because of Smov, I am at very least 11 shots deep. I met her in a website called Quotev. It's a random website where basically you can post like stories and quizzes and dumb shit like that. Yeah, can I tell you I once started e-dating from the it's comments of fan fiction.net holy oh dear fucking god so but... you guys e-dated for like a long time yes okay for like four plus years basically oh. on and off. okay i was really fucking attached to her because i had a rough childhood sort of so i never really got the attention from my parents that i wanted growing up in a house like that would make you very susceptible to the thing i was talking about earlier which is an intermittent reward system especially with an e-relationship you only get that attention every once in a while and when you're not getting it you're trying what you can do to get it because you know eventually it's gonna come december of 2020 a lot of shit happened and she quote unquote committed suicide okay yeah okay. and for two months she was <sighs> in a psych ward hold on from what we heard. okay i'm ready but it got worse than that because the day that she came back, I was apparently the first person she messaged. The fact that you and... as an E relationship are her closest relationship is already a huge, huge red, red flag. flag. Jeez. Oh, and I've got to mention, by the way, I was dating this girl, Savannah. Whenever Sienna got out of the psych ward from her attempt, I gave her a quick update on my life, like how I was talking to Savannah, how I had some, you know, kind of rough mental times here and there, maybe did a couple physical actions that I wasn't so proud of. About a week later, our mutual friend really fucking pissed at me. Um, okay, they were what? like, what the fuck is wrong with you? Why would you say that to her? Did but did you she say was... that it was her fault that you cut yourself? No, it oh. wasn't did, her fault. It was no one's you... fault. I just had a really bad mental time. Did you... I was just in a really bad spot mentally. And you thought she was dead? Yeah, I thought she was dead. You for didn't know that she was two in... or three oh, so months. What? You what? okay? On a question, the, all of these conversations are occurring online, right? Like these aren't. Yes, they're like, occurring over Discord. I'm just saying, like all of these takes are like extremely terminally online takes. Like, like these are people with no social skills making these sorts of comments to you. You thought she was dead faking your death is worse than actually dying because if you were to actually die those people will remember you as you lived but faking your death you will be dead to that person like what is your irl friend situation currently i am homeschooled schooling myself through college do you have irl friends that you like leave the house go do stuff with that hang out with you a few, not many, not like more than 10, I would say. And it's been that way for most of my life. 10 is a good number. But if you have people you can rely on and like actually talk to for real. The problem is I only have like two or three of those people. That's I, enough. Yeah, I think that's enough. Yeah. And I think I think when given the opportunity, you should pick real life connections over yeah. these oh, internet absolutely. connections. Just, it's just, just fucking for hard your... to after all this time. Yeah. Whenever I started talking to Sienna again, she started faking DI. D. Oh, okay, so mm -hmm. A, that's so, so uncommon. Like dissociative, just DID in general, so uncommon that I wouldn't buy anyone who told me they had it. Eventually in May of 2021, there was a big thing while still faking DID. They were like, I've got to say my apologies and leave acting like they were trying to get a new start because they have DID and we're not the same person. Yeah, it seems you like know. such a convenient occurrence. Instead of saying I've changed as a person, 
person. Like, no, look, I'm literally a different person. How do I recover as a bi guy? And how do I just get forward with it? I would honestly just go out. Like, go to a bar, like, with your friends, like, just go to your friend's house. I would give For yourself real. someone else For to real. On. I prescribe you with one dose of a major life change. Dated white supremacist girl. Let's go. Get in here. It was uh, very sad to know this because she was actually a very wonderful person. She was lovely around people. Oh, yeah. she was only lovely around people that were white. Oh. Yeah, okay. It was to the point where she started getting more comfortable around me. That's when she started breaking out. The heavy racism. What do you mean by heavy color. racism? Like, what did she start whipping out? Uh, let's do a story. We went on a double date. My friend, his name is Hez. Like, dark guy. Very dark guy. Very tall man. So you're your you're boy. Your buddy. Not you're white. My homie. Not white. No. Uh-oh. She expressed her non-fondness of this man. I looked over at her phone. I swear she was talking to some people and she had the words displayed and like she was responding to someone i hate this certain type of people did she say the n-word yes i cannot say it on your stream because i, don't I know. have a question me? did you see it on her phone or did you go for, through her phone and see it because if i had access to her phone i would have gone in and searched the n-word it was a brief like look over oh, it, i would have went would into her phone it. as fuck and Damn. searched the n-word because i would have been like i'm and, getting these um, screenshots it comes the day when i finally just had enough of her shit and i broke up with her she harassed Hezekiah and his family. His yeah. grandma recently passed away from uh, right. kidney failure. And, and she uh, was fucking was really... with him? Yeah. Well, she was like messaging it... him? Yes, on Facebook. What the fuck? It was like, what was she saying? Yeah. She was saying really depraved shit. This feels deeper than racism. This feels like something else. I was actually in a call with Mr. Hezekiah and she kept messaging him. And it's really hard to say this, but he actually fucking broke down. I have never seen yeah, a man cry so hard in my that's, fucking life. It's, so, it's super fucked up, dude. It's super fucked up. I, I have not heard like... from her, but the last time I did hear from her, she was dating this guy named Dakota. And... <laughs> Yeah. Hey, hey, there, there's a there's a pure blood name right there, brother. Real pure blood. It's sad to say, but I can't get into another relationship. It's, it's been so hard to see because good relationship wasted on someone completely gone. I so wouldn't I say help. you can't get into another relationship. I would just wait until you find someone that really makes you feel safe in a relationship. But I yeah. think you'll feel better if you genuinely reach out to your friend and be like, hey, I'm really embarrassed and um, mm -hmm. I feel really dumb that that happened. Happened, yeah. and I'm really sorry and I think that yeah. you guys will be able to recover and I think you'll feel mm -hmm. better about everything once that's fixed yeah. thank you so much for sharing your story of dating a super duper racist girl racist so she was a redditor I think you should kill her <laughs> So this girl I met in October, and I really, really liked her. Eventually, we end up going on these dates. I don't really know what to call them because dates. She says they weren't dates. If she's not uh, saying it's a date, per chance does she have a boyfriend? I will get to that in a <gasps> second. She led you on. She led you on. She led you on. She let him on. A second date. We went to paint, so we went to the park here. It was her favorite park, and she comes all the way down from her town to come to this park in particular. I tell her, close your eyes, and she holds my hand, and we go down to a bench by a lake, and it's sunset, and we paint the sunset together. And that I have that painting. That's so stuff. nice. Dude. Yeah. The second day I asked her, I was like, hey, are you seeing anyone right now? And she goes, mm, no, not really. <gasps> she's my friend. Later on, I actually get a text from her, and she's like, hey, do you want to come over to my city, and do you want to watch this play? I was like, oh, damn, she's asking me to do something? Hell yeah. And she comes in, and she is stunning. Like, oh, oh my god. Oh, shit. I was like, here, this is the day. This is the day I'm going to ask her if these are dates. If or not. It shouldn't be that confusing. When dating, it is very obvious when you're on a date or when you are officially like dating someone. And if it's not obvious and there's no discussion happening, there needs to. I walked her to her car and I was like, damn, I really have to ask her, but I'm a little baby boy. And I'm like, are these dates or have they just been hangouts? And she looks at me for a second. She goes, hmm, hangouts. And I'm like, damn, okay. I walk back to my car and I'm okay with it. <gasps> nah, fuck that. <laughs> fuck that, bro. Fuck that. Hey, you know what? Actually, fuck that. I was watching my friend play something and I sent her a snap of what we're, what we're doing. I wake up the next morning. I get a call at 11 a.m. the next day and it's not her voice. It's a dude's. And <laughs> this dude, he's doing like the I L know. plus ratio, no father figure, no no social, like that shit. Oh, you know, it's like, like, like cringe, Wait, so cringy ass, say? like flaming you yeah. for no reason. Yeah, he just, he just started flaming me for no fucking reason. And he was like talking about the 
the game my friend was playing, and I was like, bro, what the fuck? And like, I hear a giggling in the background. He's an asshole. Dude. He's trying to Yeah, he's an people. asshole, and she's an asshole too, dude. I'll tell you what, how old is she? Might be a little bit my bad. She's 23. The fact that you you did all this stuff, Here's you put so much energy into like the the dates. They were dates. They were I'm dates. I'm for real with you. I don't know any normal 23 year old girl that would go anywhere near an 18 year old boy. I'm so sorry. Later that day, I get a message from her and she's like, hey, do you want to go out with me and my friend to go shopping? I went out with them and I, I actually bought this Lego bonsai tree. I'm still building it right now. <laughs> eventually, I just didn't know how to feel about everything. I'm getting such mixed signals from this girl. So I, I eventually snap her best friend. I asked her, I was like, so like, I don't know how I should be feeling towards this girl. I just want to know if she just has anything towards me. And she was like, yeah, no, bro, she totally does. No so, shot. She didn't ask the girl what to say. She definitely did. I cared about her. So I wanted to figure out, I don't know, is this weird? I wanted to find out like when she was like on her period. So I would know when to be more like. That's weird. That's weird. Yeah, okay. I realized after a little while, she paid me way more attention every time she was on her period because I think her friends with benefits, which is actually who that other person was, the guy. It's she ghosted her apparently. Around Christmas time, we started snapping like a lot more and we actually uh, ended up starting to uh, like fall asleep on call. And she mentions like, hey, I think my friends with benefits is flaking off of me. <gasps> oh no. Oh, the other guy that I'm fucking doesn't she, want to talk to I me. I for real, 23 is too old to be falling asleep on Discord. <laughs> That's true. That it was true. Snapchat. It was That's Snapchat. True. On Snapchat? Oh. Snapchat. If someone's over 20 years old and using Snapchat, they're a groomer. And I remember one night, we're both kind of sick. We're both talking to each other in our raspy ass voices. And she tells me, she's like, hey, I think my friends with benefits gonna come over this weekend. To my face. I literally start shaking. And I emotional, tell her, oh, like, man, it's got cold in my room here. Emotional dysfunction, bro. She wanted that reaction from you. After this, I asked her friend, I was like, hey, I'm gonna need an update on how she thinks of me, like, uh, mm. or else before the weekend, or else I'm gonna fucking break. <laughs> she has absolutely no respect for you at all. After that, she figured out that I had feelings for her. She probably knew the entire time. She's like, hey, we're just friends. And I was like, cool. There was actually one day when she wanted me to go smoke and drink You're with 18. her. And uh, don't worry about it. Don't oh, worry. hold on, hold on. So she, as someone over the age of 21, is getting you, a teenager, drunk. Perhaps. Yeah, no, draft. she's a problem. Like, she should go to jail. Like, you're being groomed for real. Okay. After this, I was like, okay, I don't think she's fully understood what she's done. I'm fine with us being friends, but I just need her to understand that whether she meant to or not, I feel played. And I made like a 45 minute long ass video and I sent it to her. And after that, radio silence. And then eventually she unfollowed me on Snapchat and shit. I okay. think she's... Well, Insane. I think she should date people her own age. Here's the thing. We're going to meet again eventually. I don't know what to do then. Not do nothing. Do we're both, do we're nothing. both art majors and our school is tiny. Yeah, ignore her. Power mover. When you're her age, you'll be like, damn, how could a person my age act like that? Right now with the person I met on Tinder, it's like their personality is really, really nice. And they share a lot of common interests. I'm just, I guess, afraid or something. I don't know. Just take it slow. Take it slow, dude. You're 18. I think you're getting taken advantage of a little bit in the dating scene just because most of the people in the dating scene that are adults are way older than 18. I would try to like not let yourself get too far ahead of yourself and be like, yeah. holy shit, this is the girl I'm going to marry. Yeah, and have fun with it too. Friends with benefits use me for money and outed people. I've uh, been there. My ex-boyfriend used me for money. Okay, I have this friend. We go way back, like uh, 15 years back as we're friends. This friend of mine was like a uh, very questionable. Everyone knew she was quite tough. Toxic. Like towards me, she was extremely nice. We started to kind of fall for each other. And there were many instances when I had to constantly give her money or just like, hey, I'm going to the city. Can you give me a quick uh, 20 bucks? So she was suddenly, after years of being emotionally dependent on you, she was suddenly financially dependent on you too? Yes, exactly. Do, do you realize and that you have a child now? Yeah, I you, did realize. You're a parent. We got into a huge argument. I was like, sorry, man, but I can't put up with this anymore. Even if there was something between us, mm-mm. She did come up to me, try to apologize, but it was such a like, hey man, I guess I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> like a half ass? <laughs> yeah, super half ass, super cool. Like, man. Right after the half ass apology, I had a friend that is transgender, and at that time they were a minor and they wanted to out them to their parents straight up, which were extremely like, mm, like religious, yeah, super yeah. religious, super strict. That could have gotten them to be kicked. Out, yeah, out of their own house sure. yeah and i did not have it i was about to bury this bitch underground i really genuinely wanted to throw hands because that was my friend 
that they were coming at. Why did she right? want to do that? I don't understand. Like genuinely, I did have a conversation with her afterwards. She said, I don't know, man. Like you just made me jealous and whatnot. You didn't want to spend time with me. You never like apologized or something. Like it was also my fault. I honestly would just not ever communicate with this person ever again. Every single friend of mine is friends of theirs. Um, so whenever I come to a party, they're always there. Is it weird to ask like, if other people don't like them also? Because a lot of people will like not fuck with someone and won't say anything because they're scared to say anything. And once you let them know, hey, I don't fuck with them either. They're like, oh shit, thank God I don't like them either. A few people said like, yes, of course, I hate that person. I would never go near them. And they do stay away. But most of my friends, she's not that bad. Come on, feel sorry for her. She's completely lost. She doesn't have any friends. Yeah, but and, like, like, why do you think that is? Like the common denominator in every failed friendship is you. It's okay to be a piece of shit but it's not okay to lie to yourself about being a piece of shit i bet if one person like kayla said if one person speaks up like i don't like them and i don't want to hang out with them yeah i agree actually no one wants to be the one asshole that excommunicates or alienates somebody but if everyone's mm -hmm. doing it not any one of us are bearing all of the weight of that and that's cool i'm fine with that but very recently it was valentine's day uh -huh. me and my close friends they started to not hang out with her as much the next thing i know a party is happening at her place and everyone is invited of my friends are going there and either I spend alone or I come along tag along I would just go power move and I went there. The whole time, I was just kind of there, sure, sitting around, but she kept trying to sit next to me. Whenever I finished my glass, she would run up to me, here you go, here you go, have some more, this and that. And the thing is, there were feelings between us. So it's kind of like pulling me in, but pulling me out because I know what kind well, of person she's a manipulator. she is. She spent a lot of time with you. She knows which strings to pull. I genuinely don't know how to back away because now she has my Instagram again. She unblocked me on everything. On everywhere and it's just weird you kind of have like two options you can either be around her and be fake about it or go full nuclear Ooh. and be like, I don't want to be around her. Yo, blow it up. All right. Well, I hope that you get that leech removed soon. Thumbs up. Thank you so much for hearing me out. Was she a hoe? I want you to give us the rundown and we're just going to respond with a yes or a no. Start at the top. First off, I, I know the answer already. Uh, Tinder girl. Okay. So you're a hoe too. Second, girl I was friends with in high school. After high school, we had a very nice relationship. When I say very nice, the best six months of my life. It it was only six months though, but god damn it, I wouldn't trade those six months for anything. Aww. A young life of conditioning made me think that her genuine want for me to be around was not in fact genuine. She would always tell me, oh my god, you're the perfect guy. I want to be with you for the rest of my life. I want to marry you type things, okay? Like, it make my heart skip a beat when she'd say these things, right? Wait, so where is she? She's got another guy. She's moved on. I haven't. I Why did you break up? She put me on this pedestal so high, I literally did not think I could meet her expectations. Imposter I, syndrome? I guess that's what that is, Maybe. isn't it? <laughs> <sighs> I thought this kind of genuine want for just me doesn't exist. I have to provide something. Girl, you gotta and work on yourself. I would very much go on quite the limb here and say I am very much autistic. When I was growing up, I didn't really understand why people got so emotionally invested in things. And I felt like I was doing something wrong. Like, they're getting all excited over this. I guess I should be excited over this. Take this mindset mm -hmm. and apply it to, man, everybody thinks that my girlfriend's kind of wacky and goofy. I guess I should feel like she's wacky and goofy too. Oh. And I, I gaslit myself into believing that I was being used. Let me start by telling Whoa. you it's very common to let the people around you and their opinions affect how you feel. It, you are not alone in that. At the end of the day, you are the only one who can decide what's right for you. And it is possible that those friends did see something that you didn't see and were looking out for you. It's also possible they were full of shit. The being used part was an interpretation of everything I gathered from people. I kind of gathered that a girlfriend that wants attention a lot is somebody who's using you. Are you saying this is what you believe or what you believed in the past? This is what my accumulation of how relationships work over like oh, so literally the fucking internet. internet and I, oh, I, I was, okay. you saw a bunch of red flag <laughs> tweets and you were like, oh, these are bad things. My partner does these things. Oh, binging YouTube for hours. You get to the Reddit TTS videos. You get to the Twitter moments videos. Like the r slash AITA shit. 
Oh my, <laughs> yeah, oh. that shit. So oh we get God. to that. Bro. Yeah, there's also no yeah. representation of actual relationships. You got fucking black pilled out of a relationship. <laughs> of someone who cared. Sometimes so what you you're care. saying is I had something and I fucked it up. <laughs> I'm gonna be honest with you, you may have fucked up a little bit. But yeah, if it yeah, was no, meant I... to be, you know, have you talked to her recently? We've been friends ever since. How does a boyfriend feel and about that? He's jealous of me. This is not official advice. Yeah. This don't, is don't... off kilter. If she's still communicating with you after he's not okay with it, There's something. she's willing to disrespect her relationship to stay in contact with you, she she still wants you. There's something there. If hmm. we put okay. our heads together, we could break up their relationship. Oh yeah, I make a Tinder account of her boyfriend. I match with girls in their area. And I go on girls... my Instagram. I slide into her boyfriend's DMs. Oh yeah, and then yeah, yeah. And then I send screenshots to her. Uh, we can, let's we go... can ruin this relationship let's ruin right him. now. Let's ruin them, break them up, nuclear option, blow it up. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs>